How many times have you heard somebody say, well, if XYZ art is so good, how can we never see it captured on video? That's an excellent point. And today we're gonna to break that down and ask the question, is using video footage an accurate gauge of a martial arts effectiveness? Now, we're not gonna cover any specific martial arts in this video today. We've done that a thousand times over, and we've already done a video on mixed martial arts versus traditional martial arts, so you can check that out. There's the link in the description down below if you wanna go down that road. Today, we're gonna address this question, and it's a very, very fair question, because let's be honest, video footage is pretty telling. You know, the camera sees what the camera sees, and sometimes it's hard to argue the evidence put in front of us. I will be referring on occasion to specific video clips, and I'm not gonna show them in their entirety because they've been shared all over the internet, they're very common, it's hard to find the sources, so I'm gonna show glimpses, but in the description below, I'm gonna provide all the links to the videos I use, so that way, if you guys wanna go check them out in their entirety, they will be available down there. But the goal of today is to actually look at the concept of video footage and analyze why it's extremely accurate, why it's very truthful, and then we're gonna look at some caveats as to, well, there's some things to keep in mind when it comes to video footage, and then at the end of this video, I'm gonna make an observation and ask you guys a question that I hope supports this observation. So let's get started. Okay, let's start off with the obvious reason why cameras are dependable and why footage should be used to judge an effectiveness of a technique or an art or whatever the argument is. The main factor is it's visual confirmation. It's actual visual evidence presented to us. We can see a situation play out as it played out. And video evidence shows us that just how fast a real defense situation can happen, how fast it starts and how quickly it ends. Video also shows us just how different a real life fight is from anything you see in sparring or in a competition or in any rehearsed self-defense dojo routines. We also live in an age where most people have a camera in their pocket. It takes very little time to pull that phone out and push a button to start recording. Not only that though, is there are surveillance cameras everywhere. So there's a good chance of a situation occurs in the public uh, space that it will be caught on camera and in some cases caught on multiple angles. It can also show you the harsh truth of what actually works and what doesn't work in a real life situation. Many times people try fancy things in a real life fight and it backfires on them. But other times they can show you some tried and true pressure test methods that you can depend on in a real life situation. There's a couple of videos out there, for example, that demonstrate uh, a basic throw that you would find in, a, you know, in judo or jujitsu or some sort of grappling art. Now, one video, the throw was per perfectly executed and the person was apprehended. The second one, it wasn't as perfectly executed, it wasn't as clean, but it still worked, it got the job done. So it shows you that practicing methods like this, that there are techniques out there that are tried and true and will work in a real life situation. It can also demonstrate the difference between a dojo version of a technique and a street version of a technique. We always hear the term street version. So for example, in the Jiu Jitsu school I train at, um, our Sheehan will show us a technique, you know, say we're gonna do a basic throw, and he'll show us how to do it to protect our partner. You know, how to do the throw smoothly, how to make sure we don't hurt them when they land, and then he'll tell us on the street how it would normally be done where you would just drop them on their head. That's a valid excuse, you know, in a real life situation, you're not trying to take a person and throw them and put them nicely on the ground. You're using the ground as a weapon. That should be the only defensive maneuver you have to take. If you can perfectly execute a throw, that person hitting the ground should end the fight. And also it can keep us honest in terms of video footage holds us accountable. With cameras everywhere, if you defend yourself, you know, you're gonna be held accountable for your own actions, even if you're not the one who started the fight. And we've covered this in the previous topic on too much self-defense. There is a line you can cross. Even if someone else starts a fight and you defend yourself, you can go too far. So unfortunately, we live in a time where legality is a thing. You've gotta take a lot into consideration and cameras are gonna hold a lot of people accountable. Okay. Let's flip things around a little bit here and take a different perspective. This topic usually comes up in a debate on whether or not a specific martial art is effective or a technique is effective, and people point to the um, presence or absence of footage to whether or not to, to base their argument on. The problem with that though is, yes, while that might be good for recent times, let's not forget that all this video footage is only a recent development. Within the past 15 years or so, prior to that, I mean, think about thousands of years of history of stuff that was not caught on film because video footage wasn't around or as common as it was today. And that brings up my next point is most, even today, most self-defense and most fight situations are not recorded. I repeat, most situations are not recorded. So to kind of emphasize this point, if you spend a couple of hours on YouTube searching for real life self-defense situations, you're gonna find a lot of stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot of footage out there, but 
you're gonna to start to realize maybe after an hour or two, you're gonna start coming across the same clips multiple times. And maybe if you spend an afternoon on it, maybe if you're really productive, you'll find 100, maybe 200 clips. Now that's a lot, but think about it. Even say, let's just say you find 200 unique clips. I'm willing to bet in any given city, large populated area, any given day, a lot more than 200 incidents happen, whether they be minor fights or fist fights or self-defense situations or real life violence events. Think about the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of incidents that happen and why isn't YouTube filled with thousands of clips? That's because most of the time fights are not filmed. They happen quick. Remember how we talked about how fast they are? And think about it too. If it's in the public area and a situation happens, there's a good chance it'll get caught. But how many self-defense situations happen in parking lots or in the home or in an alley or just walking from one building to another where people might not have the camera out or just happen faster than people can record it? That is the norm. So whether you're arguing for one art or another, it doesn't matter the art, it doesn't matter the technique. Just keep in mind that most situations are not recorded, just a small sliver. And that's what usually goes viral and gets shared because it's not as commonly recorded as we think it is. And also I wanna highlight again, fights versus self-defense. Fights often have buildup. There's often a lot more opportunity to bring out cell phone footage. That's why most of the footage you see out there is of a fist fight because that's usually got a little bit of escalation where there's less footage of self-defense situations unless it's caught on a surveillance camera because they tend to happen much quicker. So there's a little bit of an imbalance between fight footage versus self-defense footage. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Most of the time, this debate is between BJJ and any other martial art. People saying, you know, BJJ is better and look because there's so much footage of it. That is a valid point. There's a lot of footage out there of BJJ and MMA based sport fighting working in a real life self-defense situation. That's not a lie. But to be fair, and like I pointed out already, this all this video coverage is new within the past 10 to 15 years. And that's also when we saw a major spike in popularity of MMA and BJJ gym. So there's also a lot more likelihood of capturing those as well. There's a mix of footage out there, but I'm just saying sometimes, and I'm not saying one way or the other, but sometimes it's worth thinking about what's what's more popular at the time, what's more likely to get caught on camera versus what's not. And also let's consider this too. There might be even more footage out there and it's hard to know what's actually out there because there could be a lot of situations that were filmed, but maybe they're not released publicly because of a pending lawsuit or a person doesn't want to be held accountable for something or maybe it just simply wasn't put online. So that could factor in that there's probably a lot more footage than we're even aware of that's just not on YouTube or any other social media site. And we have to take into account that a lot of videos are simply staged. So not only do we have to think about the context of what happened, now we have to discern and, and try to validate whether or not it's even a real video at all. So that's just something to keep in mind just because you see it on camera doesn't always mean it's real. So gauging the effectiveness of a martial art or any given technique gets really fuzzy here because of what we just mentioned. But not only that though is context is everything. Many times when a fight starts and it's recorded, it's oftentimes not recorded from the beginning. Sometimes it's already in process when people get their cameras out. So we don't know always what happens leading up to that event. Was it just an argument or were a couple of uh, throw, blows thrown beforehand that we didn't see or were there any techniques that worked or didn't work that we didn't see? Or is this possibly a follow-up fight to something that happened five minutes earlier? We don't always know. So you do have to be careful that sometimes when we look at a video sample, it might not be a complete specimen of a situation. So as a disclaimer, in my mind, I have no question that BJJ is excellent art. I think it's one of the best arts out there. And MMA gyms in general, you know, teaching the mix of stand-up, you know, with Muay Thai, and boxing, a mix of arts, I think it's very effective. And there's plenty of footage to show that. But to be fair, there's also footage showing traditional martial arts working as well. There are some sample videos out there that clearly show a traditional martial art working in a self-defense situation. But again, we don't know the context. Was this pressure tested? Is this the first time this person's been in a fight? You know, we see traditional stances and yes, you could argue whether or not it was performed correctly or if it was sloppy or not. But at the end of the video, at the end of the day, the defender was able to walk away safely from the situation. We also need to take into account the experience level of the people in the video. We don't always know what their background is. We might look at a clip and be like, oh, well that art clearly doesn't work because he, he got his butt kicked. Well, maybe he's a white belt or maybe he's only had a week at the gym or maybe he just sucks in general or maybe the other guy was just that much better. We don't always have the context of their experience level and unfortunately that does play a role because you can't always judge an entire art by one person because what if they weren't taught properly or what if they didn't pressure test? Maybe it's a good art, but they don't pressure test or spar in the school and they don't know how to apply it on a person or maybe it's just impractical. There's a lot that goes into it. So you have to also take into consideration the person's experience and their skill level. 
And basing an art on a whole is tough too because we don't always know what that person's art is. There's clips out there of spinning back kicks and round kicks winning a fight. So if anything, it can show you that that particular technique might work, but we don't know where they learned it. Maybe it's Taekwondo, maybe it's Tang Soo Do, maybe it's Karate, maybe a friend told them or showed them. We don't know where that person picked that up. So to judge an entire art by a video clip is that much more difficult because we can't always identify the art. A lot of them are similar. A lot of people learn mixed disciplines too. Also, there's footage out there of even great arts failing. You know, not every clip of BJJ or MMA shows a person winning the fight. That doesn't mean grappling isn't good. Grappling's fantastic. I think BJJ is, again, one of the best arts out there, but it doesn't win every single time. So I don't think it's fair to look at a video of somebody failing with it saying, oh, well, the art doesn't work because, look, it didn't work for him. No, but it's worked in other videos. So, you know, cameras capture arts failing as much as they capture arts working especially when it comes to multiple attackers. And once again, we've covered that in a separate topic, and I've brought this up many, many times. The dangers of grappling is, when it comes to multiple attackers, you're at a severe disadvantage. And there is video footage of that as well. But video footage of real life fights can be a great learning tool. There's a lot you can gain from it. Mainly you see how things actually play out. You know, it's easy to get stuck into a drilling class, regardless of the art, you get routine. Seeing a real life situation, it's kind of a reminder of, you know, fights are a little bit scarier sometimes than what we practice for. And you can see what often does work, what often doesn't. Sometimes the fancy stuff works, most of the time it doesn't. But, but looking at video footage, it gives us a real life sample of something that's scary and real and raw. So in the terms of using video footage to judge an art or judge a technique, I think it's an incomplete tool. I argue that the sample size is just too small. I don't think there's enough video evidence out there to solely base an art's validity on just what we see in video. I mean, we can judge a particular practitioner, we can judge how that person uses that technique or their skill level, but I don't think it's fair to judge, either condemn or praise an art just because of what we find on YouTube or other social media platforms, because I just think the sample size is far too small. Most fights are just simply not recorded on camera. And if you disagree, then let me ask you this. For those of you out there who have defended yourself and been in a real fight, and I don't mean dojo setting or in a competition, but I mean a real life fight, how many of you have footage to show of it? Let's try a different metric. Let's assume that this video gets a thousand views today. And I'd be willing to bet that at least 20 to 30% of those viewers have had a situation in their life that was a fight or a self-defense situation. That's two to 300 people. And honestly, I would probably bet a little bit more, but let's just stick with 20 to 30%. If I were to ask you right now, just today, could two to 300 of you provide footage of yourselves using your self-defense techniques just today alone? We don't see two to 300 self-defense clips or fight clips show up on YouTube every day. So all I'm asking is just, just be careful how you use the judgment. Video tells a lot of truth, but it's not always the whole truth. So in the end, know the goals that you wanna get out of a martial art and then go and find an art that's going to push you hard with resistance to earn those goals. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I know today we covered a pretty hot topic and I understand that there's gonna be a lot of debate. I just ask again, as always, keep it civil. We're a community here to share and support each other, not disparage and insult each other. So I would love to hear about any experiences that you have of any techniques or arts that did work for you and those that didn't. If you guys by any chance have footage to share, that would be awesome. I understand if you don't. But uh, like I said, let's make this a productive discussion. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week.